Hey there! Um, <laughs> today we're going to have a look at one of these pens. Actually, we're going to have a look at three of these pens. It's one Doom car, but it's three Doom key. Now, this is named, this is a pen made by Desiderata Pens, my, my dear friend, uh, Maestro Pierre Miller. Uh, he asked me if he could send me some of these, lend me some of these, I should say, just be clear. And if I would be interested in doing a review. So I have one right here, but I'll show you two others that he sent me, two different materials. And it's a, it's a very interesting pen. So if you know Pierre's Subriquet, this is very much like that. I have here on top a Subriquet and then at the bottom a, um, a Doom car. And therefore, it, it, and therefore, no, and it, it is, it's very much, they're two very similar pens, except the Doom key are bigger. Now, why do I keep mixing the terms here? Doom car is singular and Doom key is plural. It's kind of like a epic, passionate type of music. Um, and I was trying here to see if I could convince you that Lord Doom key is an ancestor of Pierre, who lives somewhere in the UK and is in the House of Lords. Lord Doomkey, you see. Anyway, uh, I, I was assuming that probably wouldn't work. I don't think anyone's going to buy that. So anyway, I, I, so here we go. The, the, the Doom car, multiple Doom key, Cool pens. Pierre uh, makes pretty much every part in-house, including the clip, uh, not the nib and not the feed, but I think he even makes the nib color himself. So he, it, it's really, these are pens made in-house. They're, they're pretty cool, uh, piston filled, so that's kind of neat as well. I'm going to cover all the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at these three Doom Key or a single Doom Car. Um, this is basically a thicker Subriquet, and if you really want to see, this is the Subriquet. Uh, especially the section is a little bit girthier on the Doom Car model. Different materials, as you can see. Pierre lent me three. I've played with all of them. They're all lovely writers. Uh, there is a Jasper Hard Rubber which is a little reddish, uh, there is a briar ebonite, and there is a black matte ebonite. These have Zebra G steel nibs or steel Yovo nibs. Uh, they have their piston fillers. I bet you cannot even see, but this is a piston turning knob. It's good pen manufacturing. There's no gap or anything, so it's very nicely done. Um, they were limited editions, they're released for the Baltimore Pen Show, but I mean, different. They, they come out in different materials, right? So these, um, they are year stamped. These are 2024. Look at the blind engraving there. Uh, the prices range a bit, depending on the material, about 325 to 350 US. The black ebonite is 300 US. Uh, and one thing that I think is worth pointing out is that they have a the rapid release threads that I'll show you in just a second. And you see them right next to a Metropolitan. So they're definitely girthier than that. I'm just gonna take these two out of the way because those I've played with, inked, cleaned, etc. This one is currently inked, so this is what you will be seeing for the rest of the review. Let's cover the parts of this pen. Nice to me, the finial on top, it's a, a solid piece, so uh, it's the same material as the rest of the cap. I always really like that. Clips are made in-house, simple shape with a nice ball, and I can tell you these work very well for pen cases. Nice bit of springiness without being too soft, so really nice. Simple cap, then we have the barrel. The barrel tapers down. We have the nice blind engraving there. It says here, Desiderata Pen Company, Doomka, 2024, Chicago, USA. And then here we have the piston turning knob. Now, these pens do not have ink in them currently. Um, so here I can, I guess, show you for what it's worth. Piston turning knob, right? So it's an actual piston filled pen. And once you close it, look at that. No gap, disappears. You can't even see it's a piston filler. I think that is some really, really nice pen making, especially look at how the material lines up. Uh, you can't see it. And I think that's really, really cool. Okay, what is this rapid thread uh, 
uncapping system mechanism device. It basically takes a quarter turn to uncap the pen. There you go. Capped, fully capped, can't go any farther. Uncapped. So if writing quickly with a pen is something that matters to you because you need to be able to write very, very quickly, you can. And I'm not, so, I'm not joking, I know there are people who really hate extensive threads. So here, even single-handedly, you can uncap this with ease. I think that's very nice. Okay, these threads are amazing. I cannot speak too highly of these. I'm serious. They are nicely rounded off on the top. And even when you run your finger across them, they are so nicely made, you barely even feel their threads. That is really, really impressive. And I find that it's, it's a, there's a technical craftsmanship involved in that, but it's, for those of you who hate threads, you don't feel them. This is really exceptional. Section, uh, tapers down, flares out a little bit, also very nicely rounded. Now, just to show you, on the left, we have the Doomka, on the right, we have the Subrake. And you can see that it's just a little bit narrower. So if that is something that matters to you, that you want something a little bit girthier, uh, then the, the Doomka would be better for you than the Subrake. Very comfortable pen to hold. It doesn't really post. You can put the cap on the back, but it doesn't really snap in place or anything, so it'll just fall off. But again, it's a fairly large pen. Uh, and this is not with the Zebra G nib. Obviously, this is a uh, Yovo nib with the Desiderata logo on it, which I think is quite cool. And, and this is something that Pierre ground himself into what I would say is, is a, a, a fine italic. And then you have the, the standard plastic feed. Pretty nice. So the materials, <laughs> these materials are really nice. If you like a black ebonite, just wiping the white specks off of that, um, of course, that's, that's perfectly fine. And then you get a very nice black pen. It might look really cool with a black nib. This has a, a chrome colored nib on it. Um, but if you, I know people, some people love black pens. So here you go, that's, that's a good option. For me, if I were to get either of these, I mean, these materials, I think are just absolutely stunning. The, the uh, wavy patterns on these, the swirls are just out of this world. Really, really nice and really fun to use. Speaking of that, I think it is time to do a writing sample. And of course, I'm holding the right pen. Sorry, I meant I'm holding the wrong pen. I put away the pen that was inked right now. Here we go. So, let's hop my here. Desiderata. Desid oh, I can't I can't write anymore. It's been a long day already and it's only like 10 a.m. Desiderata. We are talking Doomka in Church Slavonic. Um because <laughs> why not? This is a fine nib and the ink is uh, waterman blue. Serenity. I just put that in because I have to return these pens. It's easy to clean. I know it's not the most spectacular of, of inks, um, but Pierre does have a thing for trying to match up pens and inks. And I think in this case, the blue actually works pretty well. Uh, nice writer. Nice, pretty smooth. Um, fast writing. very pleasant. Wetness. No complaints there. And again, if you get this particular grind, you do get a nice amount of natural line variation. This is under no pressure, um, which I think is quite neat. With a bit of pressure, again, you already have some line variation. With a little bit of pressure, always very careful. It's not a flex nib. You can definitely get out some nice line variation. It does work nice wonders for your handwriting, these sort of italic grinds, I find. Okay, reverse writing. Now, from what I understood, um, Pierre actually took classes more or less with Richard Binder to learn nib grinding. And they do actually write 
nicely upside down as well. Although in this case, with an italic nib, you tend to get something that's again kind of italic, so I don't know how much is gained, and I don't really write with my pens upside down anyway. But if you do, now you know what is and is not possible. Here we have the Dumka. We should now discuss what I like and what I don't like about this pen. Let's get started. Now, what do I like? What do I not like about this Doomka or the Doom Key? <laughs> um, for me, there's a lot to like. I'll start with the price because I know that some people are going to say, oh, oh, 325, 350 dollars, three something in that range. That's rather a lot. Yes, that is indeed rather a lot. Now you have some nib options. You have uh, the, the, the Zebra G nibs that the Pierre Ray started off with for, for flex writing. But you can also get Yovo nibs and he, he can grind these. He's certainly done a nice job on these. Bear in mind, that I, I understand there are cheaper pens out there, but bear in mind that Pierre makes all the parts for this pen these pens, sorry, right? So when I say handmade pen, I guess it depends on how you want to define handmade because a lathe is involved and that's a, that's a tool, right? But still bear in mind that all these pens get made on such a device by hand. And I do think that when you take that into consideration, that he is a one-man operation, that there is not a whole factory behind him, that there are not 70 employees, that he, he creates the basic pen and then it's passed off to the, the polisher and then it's passed off to the, the whatever, the, the clip maker and whatever. That's not there, right? So it's a one-man operation. And as a result, when you make things in small batches like he does, that will affect the price. And I think that what you get for this amount of money is a very well-made, comfortable pen where everything works. The tolerances are tight. I've tried to show this before, but I mean, look at look at where the clip, where it meets the cap. That's not a huge gaping hole. That's a tight tolerance. It's well-made. This nice system of quick capping, it's capped. It's uncapped. It's about, I, think, I would say about a quarter turn and you can write, it's nicely made. These threads are so nicely made that nothing there is sharp. That makes it very pleasant to hold, very pleasant to use. So really, I don't find a sharp corner or edge anywhere. And I do think that that craftsmanship is a very good justification for the price. That's the point I was trying to make. The cap works well. If you want something that you can access quickly, to write with quickly, great option. If you want a pen that's very comfortable, I certainly find it very comfortable. And yes, it is bigger than the Subriquet, but I've been using the Subriquet a lot. In fact, I, I liked it so much that I told Pierre he's not getting the Subriquet back. Um, so it's bigger, but it's not an oversized huge pen. I think that people with a lot of different hand sizes can use this comfortably. And same way, sorry, the point I was trying to make is the super K is smaller, but even that I find very comfortable. So based on your hand size, you may gravitate towards a Doom car or multiple Doom key. <laughs> I just can't let that go. Um, or a super K if you like something a little bit um, smaller. But, but again, it's, it's, it's a, a small difference in diameter. It's not really a, a length difference. Uh, the pen sort of posts. I'm a little careful because I am giving these back, right? Um, it's quite it's quite loose, so you can put the cap on the back and you can write with it, but it doesn't really click in place or anything, so, so be a bit careful with that. You get a piston filler, an actual, as I understand it, in-house made piston filler. That too contributes to the price in my mind. Overall, I, I would love to say it's inexpensive. It's not, something in the 300, hmm weirdly bit my own teeth that's odd anyway sorry something in the 300 dollars range you can't you can't pass off as, as inexpensive it's not but then it is a very high quality product um made in the us which i know matters a lot to certain people um i, I said that non-judgmentally i know that some people really care about stuff made in the us so then there is less that but even if you don't care it is still made by one guy who knows what he's doing. 
Pierre, can you please make this your new tagline? Desiderata pens, made by one guy who knows what he's doing. I, th <laughs> I think that's pretty successful. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, so we've talked about the price. I think that that's, in my mind, justified, but, but your, your opinion may vary, and that's, that's, of course, entirely your right. The one thing I will say, what is a shame, is that a lot of these are made in limited materials. He only has so much material, and the materials work out in such a way that each pen looks quite different. So he has pictures on the website where you can actually order, I want number five and I don't want number 10, because that's how different the materials are. The swirls come out different, but it's not just a matter of some have a little bit of swirl, some don't. They look quite different. Check out the website and you will see what I mean. Not mine, I mean Pierre's. So, in all, very cool pens. I think they're very, very nice, and I have very much enjoyed playing around with these. So what I want to do next, I will also record a review of the Subriquet, and then for people who can't really decide, or have trouble deciding, I want to do a fountain pen shootout between the two, so you can actually see the differences uh, up, more up close between the two pens. So that will be coming in a future date as well. That's all. Pierre, thank you very much for lending me these pens and trusting me with all this. And I'm sorry for all the crap I have come up with in the span of like a 15 minute video, but here we are, that's what I do. I hope this was useful and I'd gladly see you later. Bye.